Hello gamers, it's Tom Seidner, the Lonely Gamer, and today I'm going to do a little how-to video on how I created the print and play for Mythic Battles. Now Mythic Battles is an amazing, awesome game, and I kickstarted it, and I'm very unpatiently waiting for the Kickstarter to come about and send me the actual game. But the cool people at Monolith sent out a packet to people who kickstarted the game to allow them to print and play the game. So if you have the packet to print and play the game and would like to print and play the game, I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I did in order to print and play the game. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a really quick video overview of the way my game looks right now. Now I've actually been able to print and play almost everything in the packet except for there's uh, three troop cards. I think it's the Hellhounds, the Hell Warriors, and the uh, Atlanteans. And I didn't print all the troops for them because there's uh, several little troops and I didn't have enough troop stands to hold them all. But I'm going to try to find some proxy to use with those if I want to play those in the game. But everything else has been printed and everything looks great. And I'd like to show you first the overview and then how I did some of the things I did. So go ahead and take a look at the overview and we'll be back in a second. So here is just a large overview of what... I've got so far for the print and play. The board has a piece of plexiglass, a 24 by 24 piece of plexiglass that's sitting over the top of the printed area. It's a piece of plexiglass that we use for several different games so it's not something that was specifically purchased for this print and play, but it happened to fit perfectly on top of it. Okay, so let's go over some of the things that I used in order to do this print and play. So the first thing is um, the actual stand-ups for the uh, characters. This is uh, Athena. And uh, you can notice that they're very thin because what I did was I just printed out the uh, characters that were provided by Monolith and they were double sided so I just folded them in half and then after I folded them in half I just um, cut them out to whatever I wanted and then I placed them in these bases. Now these bases I got from the um, Pathfinder Beastry box and I'll show you a little bit more about these bases in, in a moment. The other thing I got were these dice. These dice were fairly cheap. Um, you can use any old dice you have but in the game the dice have a blank face on them for the six. We played this game with dice that actually had sixes on them and people became confused about you know what's the six do so I've got these dice that I found online they're monster dice and you can see on the six they have a monster face this is much less confusing for the players and it's not a blank but it's as close to a blank as I could find and so I'm using these in the game they were fairly inexpensive I think they were uh, four bucks for six of them on Amazon the next thing I did was I used some tokens that I already had for Imphala. Uh, these are some Fantasy Flight tokens that you can buy on Amazon, but I already had a bunch of these, so I just used several of these. I think I have 10 set aside for the Imphalas, and they're just simple, um, simple just tokens. You could use anything for this. You could use pennies. Uh, you could use cubes from old games. You can use anything you want for the Imphalas, so these are very simple to to put in. The other thing I did was I made the cards and this is one of the most interesting parts. I made the cards for the characters. Now originally I had made the cards, this was my original design of the card here and as you can see it's smaller. This is about uh, 3 by 4 and I printed this out on my laser printer and you can see the quality of it. It's okay but it's not great. I have a color laser printer and um, it does a pretty good job, but it's not terrific. This um, person here, I printed this on my laser printer as well. It looks pretty good, but not perfect. Unfortunately, my poor laser printer, who has been giving me trouble for a long time, finally gave up the ghost about halfway through printing these, and I had to move to a different 
direction. So I actually decided to actually have this printed through Walgreens. So I actually sent this to Walgreens and they actually printed these for me and uh, they look absolutely amazing. This is a four by six. So um, they're big and easy to read and they're, they look amazing. The quality on them is much better. Now one thing I did, which you'll notice, is that if you look right here, um, at the top of these cards there was no notation for the attack, defense, um, ranged, and movement. So I actually copied that from another card and I actually pasted that on the picture before I printed it. There was also an issue with the Aries card. The Aries card has a missing um, notation for having to use an Art of War card for one of his powers. So I actually cut and pasted that onto his card before I printed it as well also. So I just updated those using GIMP and then once I was done updating them then I actually uh, uploaded these files to Walgreens and they printed this for I think it was 29 cents a piece. So I think it was like I'm sure it was 450 for all the cards to print all the cards in the um, original packet. So I've got all the cards for all the characters in nice color, high gloss, and then what I did was after I got done, I went ahead and I laminated these. Now you wouldn't have to laminate these, but the way I'm keeping track of damage on here is I'm using a dry erase marker, and whenever I take damage, I go ahead and I just mark off the line just like that, and that's how I keep track of where my characters are at, and so the lamination makes it really easy to play the game, and when you're done, just wipe that right off, it's gone, and you're ready to play again. So really uh, good technique, to be honest with you. I actually think that this is probably going to be better, this write on and wipe off, than it's going to be when I get the actual game, because the actual game is going to have a little slider that moves up and down, but I'm afraid that slider is going to get bombed, and I don't know how well it's going to work. I guess we'll find out, because some of those things are good and some of them are not. But this is really nice. Just wipe, write it on, wipe it off, and you're ready to go. Now, I had two different size lamination seats that I used. This one is 65% smaller than this. So when I printed this out, I printed this out at 65% of original, and this one I printed out at 100% of original. So if you want them smaller to take up less uh, space on your table, then do this. If you want them larger, do this. Now the one issue here is that the lamination sheets are, um, these are very common. These are very common lamination sheets. This is a 4x6 sheet. You can find this just about anywhere. I got 20 of these from Walmart for 3 bucks. So not bad. These lamination sheets, this is a three and a half by five and a half, and these are harder to find. You can find the um, five by sevens and cut them in half on the seven bias and get this size, or you can buy these. But if you buy these, you have to order them. I ordered these from Amazon, they're about seven dollars for 25. Um, so this is a harder size to get than this. Like I said, three dollars at Walmart for the four by six size lamp. Lamination and those come in packets that look like this. This is a uh, this is the three and a half by five and a half that I got from Amazon. This is made by Royal Sovereign, and these are really good. These are five mil, and these are the ones I got at Walmart. These are Scotch, and these are the four by six. And um, I'm assuming these are three mil because they don't say five mil. I think the Scotch ones don't say if they're three mil, and then underneath here it says five mil if they're five mil. So, but anyway, you can get. These readily available, these you'll probably have to order. Then for the actual cards, I just printed these cards out with a standard laser printer. I'll hold that up for you to see there. Um, they're not, you know, color at all. They're just black and white. But really for the game, really all you need is a black and white. If you had a laser printer, you could print these out in color. But uh, I didn't want to waste the ink to print these out in color, so I just printed these out on a black and white. And you can see the different cards uh, that I have here. There is the uh, Athena card that I have that goes along with this. Um, what I did was I just printed these out on standard paper, so they're fairly thin. But I sleeved them, and then I sleeved them with a magic card land behind them. So you've got the uh, sleeve. You've got the land in the back, and then you've got the actual printed piece of paper 
in front of it, which gives it a nice card feel. Feels like a normal card. When you're playing, you won't know the difference that this isn't actually printed on cardstock. I use, do use cardstock for some of my items like this. I printed this on cardstock. This is 110 pound cardstock that I got at Walmart, and you can get. I think it's uh, 50 sheets or 100 sheets. You can get a ream of it. I can't remember if it's 50 or 100 for five bucks at Walmart for 110 pound cardstock. And I can run this through my laser printer. It runs through there no problem at all. If you guys are curious about the bases I use for the figures, I use the bases out of my B Street box. I have this Pathfinder role playing B Street box that I purchased um, years ago and it has these nice little stands in it, but I'm sure you can buy just stands on Amazon if you want to put forth the effort. You also could just fold the bottoms of your figures out so that they fold out flat like uh, like this and use that. But I had these, so I went ahead and used them because I already had them. I didn't buy them. The nice thing is they came in three different sizes. They came in the large base, the medium base, and the small base. So for different uh, figures, I actually used different size bases. The last thing is, you may be interested in what kind of laminator I have. There are full page laminators. I do not have one. Uh, a lot of times I wish I had one, but I don't. But what I have is a small laminator. And the laminator that I have is the, the Fellows EXL45-2. This is a great little laminator. I don't think I paid very much for it. I think it was 20 bucks or something like that. But I've used this a lot. It will not do 5 by 7 lamination sheet, the biggest lamination sheet that it will do is it will do a 4x6. So the 4x6 is the max for this and also I use the 35 x 5 a lot. So this is a great laminator to pick up. It works well, it's pretty simple and uh, it doesn't do anything fancy but it definitely does the job. So the last thing is the board and uh, you saw the board in the walk around and I don't have the board down here but originally I actually printed the board myself. I printed it out using the poster feature of Adobe Reader and it printed out on several, I, th I think it was 12 pages and I taped them all together using packing tape but the thing was real wobbly and uh, when I tried to shoot the uh, demo video that we shot it was had weird lights you know shining off of it I mean it would work it definitely would work but I went ahead and I went to Office Depot online I uploaded the, the photo and then I had them print me a 36 by 24 poster of the board the board is actually 24 by 24 so I actually ended up with some white on either end and I'm actually debating right now on whether to cut that off or not but I ended up with the a beautiful board that they printed. There is a error on the board in one of the areas but uh, if you look at one of the documents that come with the game it's the setup guide for the board it actually shows where that should be and so I took a silver sharpie and I actually made a line where the line should have been to actually divide those two areas that didn't have a dividing line. But uploaded it to uh, Office Depot, they printed it for me. I actually had it printed on a heavier paper, so it was actually $24, but I had a $5 coupon, so it ended up costing me 20 bucks to actually get the board printed. And it's nice for me. Uh, I, if I was just playing this with my friends, I probably wouldn't care, but I'm going to actually try to take this to some game days and show it off, and so I wanted it to kind of look nice. Plus, I want to do some videos for you guys um, on, you know, a demo, and then also I'm planning on doing a How to Play uh, video for people once I've played it a bunch of times and I have all the rules down because it, there are some tricky rules and I'm still trying to work some of those out. But anyway, that's how I made my print and play game. That's all the things that I used. I hope this helps you if you decide to go and try to print and play this. This is an absolute wonderful game. I love this game. It's becoming one of my favorite games. So I hope you go out and print and play and try it. And until I see you guys next time, happy gaming.